स्क्रीन शेयर इज डन ओके सो गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ वेस्टर्न इंडिया रीजनल काउंसिल माय सेल्फ श्वेता जैन वेलकम टू ईच वन ऑफ यू ऑन दिस टेन डेज वेबिनार कम वर्कशॉप on artificial intelligence powered by business intelligence so the now the era is where artificial intelligence is not only for engineers and if you want uh, your organization to become better at using ai this is the course which uh, we have designed in such a manner that you will be able to know from meaning behind common artificial intelligence terminology to how to work we can build an artificial intelligence strategy in your company and for that we have very learned faculties with us uh, professor asif rampurwala sir and professor sohrab bakharia about asif uh, sir a uh, academician with 17 plus year of experience in teaching a corporate trainer technology enthusiast and vice principal of vidyalankar college in mumbai he is accomplished speaker and presenter so i welcome you at the platform of wirc and thank you for accepting our invitation about uh, saurabh bakharia a technology optimist is extremely passionate about emerging trend in the technology and implementing the same that improves and eases the life and businesses of many from being a professor by profession and a traveler by passion sarab has many achievements and stories to tell with a profound altitude knowledge he know uh, he now spread at wise monkeys an online information sharing portal and is also a co-founder of a mumbai based digital marketing agency called i digital Uh, I welcome you at the level of uh, WIRC. Welcome both of you, and thank you for accepting invitation. Uh, so uh, directly, without wasting uh, much time, directly, uh, I would request to you please take charge for the session. Over to you, Asif. Thank you, Shweta, ma'am. Uh, thank you for your kind words of introduction. Um, Good evening, everyone. I hope my audio is clear. Um, my name is Asif Rampurawala, and uh, me and my colleague uh, Sohrab Vakharia would be uh, engaging you all over the coming ten uh, days uh, in the area of artificial intelligence and business intelligence. Uh, today's session actually is going to be conducted by uh, Sohrab mostly. Okay, uh, I just came in to introduce myself and to just kickstart the session for today um and i'll be gone in a few minutes and uh, uh, sorab sir will then take over and you know uh, take the session forward i'll see you all again uh, hopefully tomorrow uh, where i'll be uh, talking to you all more about ai and uh, you know the techniques which i use uh, i will just start off today with uh, a very important um, concept of what you know intelligence is rather than uh, and leave the nitty gritties about ai to sorab okay uh, so um, if you really look at it uh, every uh, system you know uh, is when you talk about something being intelligent there is a lot of uh, misconception out there and misnomer about what really intelligent is uh, especially in the industry today if you really look at it uh, lots of applications and softwares and technologies uh, claim to be intelligent claim to have an ai in built okay now uh, not necessarily everything which claims to be intelligent or you know a, a very common uh, term nowadays is become a smart okay um, is really an artificially intelligent system okay so now what really qualifies something for to be an artificial intelligent so we understand that systems you know any kind of system whether it's a mobile based application whether it's a web based application whether it's a desktop based application okay can be intelligent okay if it can behave like a human now what does it mean to behave like a human so there is two aspects to it okay there is the behavioral aspect and the thought okay if a system that thinks like a human 
okay is what we will say is as having an artificial intelligence thought okay uh, systems that think rationally are different okay so in uh, human beings are what we call as rational animals right we are able to do uh, we can justify things we can put up a rational on something uh, behaviorally also we are very different okay so we can categorize this into four aspects of systems which are thinking like human or they whether they can think rationally systems that can act like humans and systems that can act rationally okay so now these are different uh, you know areas into which all systems can be divided into if you really want an intelligent system you would want something which can think and behave like a human being right then you would say you truly got a real artificial intelligence that means an intelligence which can behave and think like a human being now this is far from uh, you know it's not as easy as it seems to be the the movies which you see and the uh, talks which you hear sometimes and the uh, presentations which are made in public sometimes are you know they give you an impression that ai has matured and it's really really you know uh, available to anybody and everybody it's not so much available to everybody and uh, anybody yet but there are specific use cases especially in the industry where ai can really be helpful for any particular individual or a company okay and that's what we are going to uh, talk about and how ai impacts businesses and is there a difference between ai and bi which is business intelligence and if there if there is a difference what is it and if there is no difference then why is why are there two terms called as one is called as ai and the other called as bi so that so the, those are the kind of questions which we will uh, you know uh, contemplate and we'll try to get the answers for during the sessions which we have i will encourage uh, participants to share their thoughts and views uh, in the chat boxes uh, we will try to be you know as interactive as possible obviously with more than 120 people uh, already attending the seminar it might not be possible for me and saurabh to answer each and every query but we'll try to do the best we can all right so that's it from my side today uh, Saurabh, I think I can hand it over to you, and you will take it forward. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you, thank you so much. Bye bye. And uh, yeah, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope I am loud and clear to everyone. And uh, today we'll be going further ahead. So as Asusar already gave you a little glimpse uh, about AI, so I would like to have a little more uh, interaction with people uh, before I start with. Uh, this, this is my uh, general habit when I start with, I just generally have a little more uh, interaction with people. Uh, so, Swadham, can we have uh, people, uh, you know, typing? Like, I would like to have a few things, uh, you know, discussed with them. So, do we have a system wherein uh, all the people can type in in the chat box? Sorry, come again. Uh, I'm not able uh, to complete the sentence. Okay. Uh, I would want uh, the participants to type in the chat box. Uh, I'll be questioning certain things to them, and I want their okay. input so that we can interact a little bit. So, do we have a system? Uh, like, is it possible? Uh, I think we can do that. I just need to check with the Mishra ji, our technical person. Yes. yes uh, Mishra, yes. are you online? Uh, just, uh, just give me a minute. No problem. Please cut. Uh, meantime, I'll check and yeah. Perfect, perfect, absolutely. So, uh, all right. Uh, so, let me let me continue. So, wanted to give you a little brief about uh, intelligence, and also wanted to explain you the term artificial intelligence. Okay. So, to give you a little idea on that, I'll start off with explaining the term intelligence itself okay just give me a minute I have something to share with you, so uh, I'll be doing that.
Yes, please. So I just want if you can give access to people so that they can uh, chat with me. That's it. And that's the only requirement. So. Uh, Mishra ji, you are हाँ अच्छा सर ऐसा बोल रहे हैं कि हम है ना पार्टिसिपेंट्स को चार्ट रूम में लिखने का परमिशन दे सकते हैं क्या Hello. Uh, may I have to call you? All right. Okay. Uh, so in a meanwhile, uh, I have shared a screen where I'm trying to give you a little explanation about uh, the journey. So now this is the journey which I want uh, all of my uh, students and listeners or participants to always understand. Okay. Now this journey is starting from the data and it leads us to intelligence now i'm going to discuss a couple of things here uh, so that you understand more about uh, this journey now the term data uh, seems pretty obvious to us we've been uh, uh, you know every day in our daily lives we've been speaking the same term and uh, we believe that we know the term data okay so to our context, uh, we, we have different definitions of data, but today I'll be giving you a little, little explanation uh, to make you understand what data is. Okay, if uh, if you can get the uh, place to chat, then probably uh, I'll be able to have a little more uh, input from you. So in the meanwhile, uh, I would like to just tell you, data has its own definition that it is a collection of raw facts and data. A very simple definition which has been taught to people. Okay, so data is a collection of raw facts and figures. Now, what are these uh, raw facts and uh, what are these figures? We need to understand. Now, a raw fact, uh, when I say a fact, that means um, it is a term which has a value or a correct value. Okay, so facts, in short, we call them as numbers. So what are these numbers? Numbers are not one, two, three, four, five, and they are not uh, uh, what we speak. You know, uh, probably uh, we speak the same in Hindi, saying eight, two, three, four, or in English we say one, two, three, four. So these, these are not numbers. These are just a representation of numbers. So if in case I'm writing something, I'm typing it in a different language, I can type the same number one uh, using English, using Roman. Uh, using uh, in Hindi or, or whichever language I'm comfortable in, but I'm trying to highlight the value beneath that number, the value which is behind that number. That particular value which is behind that number, which is signifying that particular number, is actually a number. So that is a fact of that number. So data consists of these, these wrong facts. The one how I am representing, for example, I am representing it using a single line. Understand a particular line coming from top to bottom. Okay, that straight line is defining as one because somebody told me that is one. If somebody would have told me, to, you know, uh, if to represent one, you need to draw a circle. I would have drawn a circle and represented that circle as one but since i have been taught that way i consider it uh, a single way now what happens in this scenario is that uh, whatever that uh, representation what i am using to signify that that representation is nothing but a figure it's a two-dimensional graphical representation I hope I'm clear with this. Okay, so I would like to uh, uh, have a little more uh, 
you know interaction on this so if the chat pod is ready then probably i would like to have a little more uh, information so i don't know uh, let me just check with Shratavan. is is it ready or participants can you type if you can see your screen if you are able to type uh, then you can probably just type some message to the chat board and probably i'll be able to see that Uh, I guess uh, it's going to take a little time. Uh, Shradharam, are you there? Sorry to disturb you. But... <clears throat> All right, I think uh, he's been talking to the technical department. Anyway, uh, I'll go further ahead. Now what happens here in this scenario when we're trying to understand data okay so we've understood one thing that data is a collection of these raw facts and figures where there are values and there are representations how you're representing is a different story so to understand this better uh, uh, let me give you one example okay for an instance you've been shown a script which is written in chinese okay the script what you see in Chinese, that particular script, you might not be able to uh, understand. Okay, it could be possible that whatever is written, you are not able to read it. For you, it's just a drawing. Uh, something which is written in Egyptian, again, uh, you know, it's just a drawing to you. You might not be able to interpret that. So those things still have some value. It's not that they are uh, without the value. So since they have a value, that is the data. Something which is drawn, something which is have a two-dimensional graphical representation, considering it as a value, it has a value, and uh, we call that as a data. Now what happens here in another scenario, imagine something which is written and you know it. Something which is written in English, for instance, which is there right now in front of your screen. If you can read, understand what's there in front of you in this particular screen okay you will call that as an information because it is a processed form of data so that by definition if you see information is a processed form of data now whatever what happens here in this process form of data there is a process of explanation which goes by and that process explains what that value means to us. So something has been programmed in our brain. Similarly, a machines are also programmed. The information what machines have is it's coming from some data and they have been programmed to understand that. Now what happens when we have got this information? We are gonna derive knowledge out of it. Whatever information we have, whatever understanding because it is informative to us we can understand so now that we now that we have information now that it is informative it is known to us and when things are known to us we call it as knowledge something which is known to me similarly it happens in the case of machines also things are known to them when this knowledge is applied okay when the knowledge is applied Application of the knowledge is science. So, in Hindi, I will tell you this is a lot of science. I will tell you this is a lot of science. This is a lot of science. Information is a lot of science. If we have a lot of science, we will tell you that we have a lot of science. And when we have a lot of science, we will implement it, we will use it. So, that is science. Now, science can be wrong. Uh, the implementation can be not correctly done, or it could be correctly done. But when you say correctly, not correctly, you will say right or wrong. It simply means something which is by the rule or not by the rule. So, if it is done by the rule, as said, as done, it is called as intelligence and 
the other way whether it is not done by the rule it is still a sign are you getting it so the flow from the data to intelligence goes this way that from the data when it is processed you have derived information this particular information when you have you got knowledge which is implemented we call it as sign and when it is implemented correctly that's intelligence same thing is happening in machines they've got information the set of rules to implement them if it is implemented correctly by the set of rules that's intelligence now since the technology is man made we call it as an artificial technology so going by that artificial technology if things happens correctly everything falls in place we call artificially intelligent machine or we call that technology as artificially intelligent so by this we've got several examples and several doubts coming to our mind if this ai is that simple then maybe every next machine which is doing a task is an artificially intelligent machine this could come into these these questions might pop up in our mind which is correct if if you are getting such questions it is definitely correct okay now what what happens here is i'll give you another example of ai so you can say a calculator if it is calculating 1 plus 1 is equal to 5 it is correct and that is ai and i'll say yes my answer is yes if a calculator can calculate 1 plus 1 is equal to 5 yes that's correct that's ai why no 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 because human says no 1 plus 1 is 2 that's not 5 okay fine that's your rules but my calculator is programmed that 1 plus 1 that means a value incremented by 1 is represented the representation of that value after that is i because the mathematics what i have learned i have learned that way 1 5 3 4 2 6 7 8 9 this is the number game i was being taught if i would have been taught this number game ke bhai ek ke baad panch hai fir teen hai fir char hai fir do hai fir che hai to shayad 1 plus 1 is equal to 5 bolna correct hai क्योंकि मेरे रूल्स वैसे हैं तो अगर मेरे मशीन को उस तरीके से सेट कर दिया है उसमें रूल्स उस तरीके से डाल दो और वो मशीन ऐसा आउटपुट दे रही है तो वो आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंट मशीन है इंटेलिजेंस कोई बहुत बड़ा यू नो इट्स इट्स नॉट समथिंग व्हिच यू फील दैट इट्स अ ह्यूज टर्म फॉर द बिग टेक्नोलॉजी इफ यू कैन ब्रीथ योर इंटेलिजेंस इफ यू कैन ड्रिंक वाटर इजीली योर इंटेलिजेंस so artificially intelligent if you say something which is programmed by him something which is man made and is doing its task correctly it is intelligent then it is artificial intelligence i hope this gives you a little idea about the term artificial intelligence there is another term which i am going to discuss artificial intelligence and cognitive intelligence uh, before i go further i would just like to have input from swetha ma'am are we ready with the system uh, yeah i'm ready with the system tell me uh, madam uh, now can we have the chat board on so people can message uh, on the chat no no this will not be possible at your end you can't see the chat uh, uh because there is some setting uh, is different uh, at your end and at moderator end okay. moderator is okay. mishra ji so mishra ji can see the uh, question answers okay uh okay mishra ji can see the question answers okay people can message right so uh, what can we do is if mishra ji can show his screen to me so i'll be able to see the question i'll be able to see the uh, what people are typing then i can address to everyone because i i want to have a little interaction with you 
Okay, but uh, can we go today uh, as like uh, as it is because uh, I need to check with Mishra ji but how we can show it or even I am aware for this technical. Uh, okay, not a problem. No problem. We can we can go back. No, not a issue. So I'll, I'll explain, and uh, hopefully people can understand. So not not an issue. Not an issue. So we go back. Okay. Uh, okay. So Shwetan, uh, we also have a WhatsApp group, right? Where we. Right. Uh, so uh, if, if people can message in that group, uh, people can message in that group. If people can message in that group. Yes, otherwise I already posted in the group that uh, we will provide an email ID uh, so they can send it to you directly or something kind of that way we can plan. Uh, no, no, I, I need to have like currently uh, when I am on the group, I am on the session. I just want people okay, to yes, interact. Post it. Okay, so fine. They can post right. it into the WhatsApp group. You are also there. Then. Yes, yeah. perfect, perfect. I'll be reading uh, from that WhatsApp channel. So people, uh, uh, if you can, uh, that would be great. Uh, I'll be interacting with you that way. You can post the messages in the group. So just to confirm that uh, people will message, can I have uh, a confirmation from everyone? Can we can everyone send a thumbs up in our WhatsApp group if you are close to your uh, cell phone? Perfect. Oh, I've started getting thumbs up. Lovely, lovely, superb. So I, I think uh, 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 this is great, man. I'll be able to interact with people. Superb. All right. So. Uh, uh, this is going to be fun now guys um, to understand ai and to understand intelligence uh, uh, to understand ai and to understand intelligence i'm going to have a, a, a small little round of chat with you all okay so since i've told you the things about ai today i've told you what is artificial intelligence uh, you give me an example come come up with your example and tell me what do you think uh, whether that particular uh, thing is AI. Like for example, I would like to say a calculator is an AI. Uh, if do you have certain more examples, like you can say a cell phone is an AI, or you can say maybe a computer is an AI. A part of that, if any machine comes to your mind and you want to say even this machine is an AI, you can type that in the group. So I'll read out uh, Tesla autopilot. Okay, lovely. Google is an AI. Uh, Google is a company, sir. Uh, okay, more Alexa. Okay, Alexa is an AI. Uh, Alexa and Siri. Okay, uh, Facebook face recognition. Okay, face recognition. Okay, that is AI. Okay, it has AI. Lovely. Uh, Google contextual search in AI. Okay, okay, Google is an AI. Okay, lovely. It is. What more? What more? Can we have some simple things? Auto chatbots. Now these are big, 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 big terms. Can we have simple things? Netflix. Uh, no, Netflix is just a platform. It's an OTT platform. So net, we won't call Netflix as an AI. It's an OTT platform just to watch videos. Uh, and Netflix uses AI. They, uh, every company is using AI. Netflix movie suggestions. Okay, okay. Uh, we can say artificially uh, intelligent suggestion possible. Okay. Okay, very good. Uh, all right. So uh, moving further now, since we know uh, what is AI, I would like to understand. There's another term, uh, human intelligence. What do you think about human intelligence? Uh, are we intelligent? Are we less intelligent? Uh, what is human intelligence? Okay. Uh, can you tell me something about human intelligence? What do you think? Uh, is, is human intelligence smarter than AI or AI smarter than human? What do you think? Comparing uh, artificial intelligence and human intelligence. Okay, depends upon person to person. All right, uh, human is smarter. Okay, definitely, Mr. Darshan. Uh, human is smarter. Yes, uh, okay, human is smarter. 
What more? What more? How smart? When you say smarter, how smart? Or or any other explanation? What is so different? Uh, recollecting 395 section of IT Act is an intelligence. Okay, very true. <laughs> okay, we can plan AI. Okay, and AI can't plan AI, do you think? Uh, a machine can write another machine code. Like, uh, I remember in 2014, I, I've made uh, um, a programming language. At that time, I realized it is possible. Uh, AI does function for which it is designed. So does the human, uh, because he doesn't give answer based on just data, but also with emotions. Okay, now, so need to say humans have emotions? Okay, let, let me just confuse you here. I, I am here to confuse you. Okay, uh, so I would like to answer this, that uh, because he doesn't give an answer based on emotions. Now, what are emotions? Emotions are nothing but a set of, you can say rules. If something happens, then that will happen. For example, uh, if I see a chocolate ice cream, I will smile. Wow, because I love chocolate ice cream a lot. Uh, if I see a bitter god, oh, probably I might not smile. Then things are really bad. So <laughs> I need to see a chocolate ice cream always. Uh, whenever we see something, whenever we feel something, uh, we the, there is a certain action which triggers in our cerebellum, and that triggers a, a little more uh, a synopsis, and 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 that and those fired uh, you can say uh, uh, um, in our in our brain what neurons are firing energy. Uh, well, that energy is a set of energy which is defining me to take a certain action. It could be possible. The neurons in my brain, uh, after looking at a scenario, what they are firing, and with those neurons, I will start to uh, smile, or probably I'll smile, start to cry. So again, it depends upon certain set of conditions. So maybe emotions are again depending upon con conditions. Okay, so uh, in that way, emotions can be uh, can be calculated. Uh, if you want, if you don't believe me, uh, there is a program, uh, emotion detection on Twitter. I, I teach this program to my students, okay, and wherein uh, on the basis of the emotions, students, uh, or the basis of whatever is written in the Twitter and the Twitter comments, uh, you can derive the emotions, okay. So th that's possible. So going further, Bhavik says uh, AI as more uh, data than human intelligence because uh, AI might have data or information more than just uh, human intelligence. A little bit confusing. All right, let me come to this point and explain you. Uh, you can see the screen already. I have mentioned what is AI and what is cognitive intelligence. I'm going to explain you uh, how, uh, what is different in humans. So this is something uh, which Sir Alan Turing in the year 1950, now this is a history which I'm going to start with, uh, uh, started and wherein he wanted to mimic the human brain. So there's a movie, Imitation Games, you can watch that to understand what I'm trying to explain. Now just imagine there's an example, uh, and that example is, uh, I like to drink tea in the morning at 8 o'clock. I get up in the morning at seven every day, and at eight o'clock, uh, I would like to love to have a cup of tea with some biscuits. So that's my daily routine. Could be possible one fine day at eight o'clock in the morning, my mood is a little different, and I don't want to consume tea. The input is same. The day is not bad. I'm. Uh, I'm awake at seven, and my uh, uh, continue, continue, uh, the, the routine is not continued, but the output is a little different. Why is that so? I would like to hear from you all. Why my mood changes? If you can write in the chat.
at two events because of emotions due to external factors okay because of situations around you okay depends on the schedule okay so basically you are simply trying to say there are set of conditions which are there to divert my mood neurons sending signals okay a neuron sends signal based on the inputs received from the environment ai doesn't have health issues we uh, no uh, my question is different i guess so basically there are set of conditions what you're writing all are conditions there are set of conditions and i react to those conditions and i give outcome based on those conditions that's how it is Still hardware problem. Okay, I didn't get that. We respond to event as per the programs of thought in our brain and mind. Okay, that's deep. Okay, let me be very simple. A small kid who's liking the chocolate, who likes chocolate every day. Okay, you give one chocolate to that kid, he'll enjoy it. You give it twice, the person will enjoy it. Twice, twice will enjoy it. You give chocolate every day, the kid will enjoy it. But one fine day, the kid might start not enjoying it as much as while the input is the same why is that so what I'm, I'm leaving it i'm leaving it here i'm not in, in completing the answer on a purpose i'm just leaving it i'll continue this another scenario but right now you people are listening to me there are 139 participants who are listening to me and every one of you have made an image about me and everyone has made a different image about me while I'm the same person my voice is exactly same to all of you everyone is listening the same thing what I am saying but all 139 participants who are listening to me are creating a different image in their brain about me am I right or wrong yes no you can just write yes or no yes yes okay perfect a lot of yes lovely so the image what what we have what you see everyone will see a different image okay so somebody might see this guy is going to be uh, somebody who's with a huge long hairs uh, unshaved uh, somebody might think uh, the person who's talking to me um it, it's a thin skinny bone guy somebody might think that he is uh in a bit clean shaped guy because that's what you've seen in the picture uh, somebody might think something else somebody might think something else and you start to create your own perception about me you start to conceptualize a different sort of Bukharia in your mind now this is what i call as cognitivity humans cognize we cognize this is what we call as cognitivity same input given but the output is different why today that i i have been drinking tea every day in the morning at eight o'clock but today one fine day i just don't want to have it that's because of cognitivity same input different output a calculator you type one plus one calculator is going to type two you say one plus one again two you type one lakh times one plus one you type 100 times 200 times 300 times one lakh times calculator is going to give you two 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 why that's how it is programmed so why can't humans be you like chocolate i'm giving you chocolate you should enjoy you should say okay okay but no that doesn't happen three four five times you might enjoy it but one fine day you will come up saying sorry no that's cognitivity i hope i'm clear to all yes no any questions so far any questions you can post on the whatsapp i'll answer super lots of yeses artificial intelligence when i say machines they can't do that machines are conditional they are they, they don't work on cognitive intelligence they work on conditional intelligence conditions are set and they work so i would like to call ai 
as conditional intelligence. Uh, okay, uh, there is a question from Sunil. Is it because of human interaction? I didn't get you, sir. Can you elaborate your question, please? Another one I'll take. If corona robots are giving medicines to patients, is it AI? Yes, they are programmed and they are doing the work, so it is AI. Self intelligent. Uh, okay, what, what's that, sir? Uh, perception by human is different. Absolutely correct. Yes, so perception by human is different. What they perceive is different. They might perceive differently. You and I perceive differently, and they perceive differently. Okay. Yes. Uh, no, no, that's not the reason because it is cognition. Uh, perceiving differently is happening because of cognitivity. And entire world is studying this right now. Nobody's yet been able to get the answer. So, uh, my, uh, I would call him as my guru, the one who taught me AI. He's been studying the same since uh, the time 1960s. He's a very old man now, and uh, even he's not been able to get an answer. And even Alan Turing in 1950s was studying the same. Okay, uh, Alan Turing wanted to mimic the human brain and ended up making a computer system what we have. So what Alan Turing did, we will discuss that and to understand how he evolved. That will be our next discussion. Uh, calculator is a machine. Does yes, true. Calculator is a machine. Uh, does AI have imaginative skills? Uh, if imaginations are based on conditions, then yes, okay, too. Uh, because it is not programmed. Okay, uh, it covers all remote possibilities. So all uh, so is AI also repetitive work. Yes, right. Uh, let, let me let me go further. Uh, I have kept something on the screen. Uh, there are a set of questions in front of you. Okay. The first question is, can machines think? What is your answer? Yes, no. Just type yes or no. Can machines think? No, 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 no. After after all the extended, no. Are humans machines? Second question, are humans machines? Humans are not machines? No, 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 lots of no, okay. Okay, okay. Can machines think like humans? Yes or no? No, can machines think like humans? No, they can't. Oh, now everyone has become intelligent here. <laughs> uh, they can mimic, as you say, exactly, Mr. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, this is right. Chitti, okay, example, that's a movie. Okay, but good example. If programmed, okay, then machines can think like humans. Not really. Uh, human thinking depends upon the cognition and cognitivity. So <clears throat> machines cannot cognize, hence, uh, Thinking capacity is limited or rather not. Another, how would we know whether a computer is thinking? Uh, I want to answer for this last question. How would we know whether a computer is thinking? Okay, to such rules, computers can think. Uh, Sandeep, uh, okay. Can you, can you tell me how? How uh, would we know whether computers can think or a computer is thinking? Is this a process based on program? Okay. Uh, we'll never uh, think it. Think it will answer as stored. Mm -hmm. So these questions, even Alan Turing had, you know, in 1950, he solved it way before computers were invented. Just imagine, he was a a brilliant scientist, brilliant. Uh, he he made an AI without even computer system. Computer system never existed, and and he made AI. 
uh, when solutions is achieved by a process processing data fed into the system, okay, computers can't think. It works as it is programmed. Computers will never think. All right, well, I'm moving ahead. So what uh, Alan Turing did, uh, let, let me just give you an idea. Now what happened uh, during the World War that time, okay, uh, during the World War, now Hitler, uh, everyone knows who's Hitler, who's Hitler. Uh, who was Hitler, sorry. So Hitler uh, you, uh, used to uh, send messages to his, to his allies to call it for the reinforcement and to plan the attack to the other uh, countries they were fighting on. So in, the, in that world war, what happened uh, with Hitler is to communicate with his ally, allies, uh, what he used to do is to send them encrypted messages. Okay, and those encrypted messages are being sent by a machine known as Enigma. So Enigma was one of the machine by which the, the encryption used to happen. So now uh, in Britain, there were a team of calculators. Now they were human calculators who used to decrypt Enigma messages by doing permutations and combinations. And they used to make 100 people sit in a room and calculate for 24 hours. And it used to take them 24 hours to calculate or decrypt the message of Enigma 24 hours. It is as good as saying you can say 100 computer processors working together for 24 hours and they are decrypting. What if we have more? So they, they needed more mathematicians in that time and they were very less mathematicians. And it was not possible. So, Alan Turing, he thought, why can't I make a machine which can calculate? Okay, so he wanted to make a machine, something like humans, something like a human brain. He wanted to mimic a human brain so that they could decrypt the message of Hitler, which has been sent to the Allies. Exactly what he did, he developed a machine, okay, which could decrypt all the messages. You know what was the name of the machine? Okay, so when when he developed it, it was named as Christopher. Christopher was uh, Alan Turing's best friend, who was a mathematician, and he passed away in his early age. So he made a machine known as Christopher. But there were a lot of certain reasons why these things were kept secret, um, and we knew that. Charles Babbage was the one who made the computer machine or a computing machine, but then he made this machine who can, which can compute a huge room-sized computer, which could decrypt the message of Hitler. But still, he could not achieve what he actually wanted to: can machine think or thinking machines, which is yet unknown. Okay. So what he did that time to understand whether machines can think or not. And that answer was a Turing test. I, I've shared my screen with you. Okay. Ah, oh, I just happened to see WhatsApp messages. Oh, Enigma, yes. And then Christopher, Tanuja, thank you. I'm sure people, people are intelligent here. You all have watched um, limitation games, not all, but few. Definitely, very nice. All right, so now what happens here is, uh, in Turing test, what test he created, uh, on one side there was a human interrogator, on the other side, there was there were two systems. One was an AI system, and there was another human system. So a human interrogator is going to set a certain set of questions to the other side, and doesn't know who's there, the other side. The other side could be a machine, other side could be a human itself. The answers, the responses received from the other side by a human interrogator when he's questioning. So the answers which are being received, it, an interrogator would decide what has been perceived from the other end. Okay, whether it is a human answer or it is a machine-based answer. It could be, it could have been a machine-based answer. It could have been, um, it could have been an AI. Uh, System answer to have been a human answer. Now, what happens? Machines somewhere will not be able to answer it. Like, for example, uh, 
have, you all have seen movies like I'm a fan of movie buff, so that Amir Khan's movie known as PK. Yes, no. Have you seen that movie PK? So it's very interesting that movie. Uh, Amir Khan coming from some other planet. Okay. Okay, no, there are two no's. My God, uh, people are busy in their work. Uh, now, maybe you need to watch movies. PK, PK, American. Uh, there are a lot of yeses coming. Uh, okay, now what happens in the movie? Uh, he says, uh, if you remember the dialogue, he says, Acha, Acha. He says that Acha in three to four times. See what happens. This this happens with our uh, with this happens with us as the uh, you know with humans that when when we say something, uh, I, what we mean it, but that's very different. It could be satirical. If for example uh, somebody might say, "Oh, you're teaching well," it could be a satire. Uh, means you really don't know how to teach. It could be an actually compliment that okay, you can really teach. Uh, or it could be a question, or oh, do you really teach well? So a statement which has been delivered can have multiple meanings. Okay, here there are high chances or high possibilities of an AI system to fail. So Alan Turing made this test so that it can uh, make the machine more and more intelligent. So when Whenever a machine would answer wrong, and definitely human is going to answer correct, understanding the emotion path involved in that questioning method, okay, a human would be able to entertain a little extra than an AI system at times, okay. At times it could be vice versa. Humans don't have answers, but AI can throw whatever, okay. That could be. But so what happens with every mistake? It used to learn. It used to train. So all those mistakes used to be taken as a train set of data. So, so Rylan Turing made the system way before machines would ever build. So he thought that if one fine day, the day machines would be built, this algorithm would be used. And yes, in today's world, when any chatbot is made, a chatbot needs to pass a Turing test. And when the Turing test is passed, a chatbot is approved. The first chatterbot who could pass the Turing test was named as Aliza, built by uh, Mr. Uh, Professor Wiesenbaum in Germany. Okay, that was the first uh, intelligent system or chatterbot. Uh, a chatterbot is a bot which is keeping you engaged when you're typing. So right now, when we talk to the customer care, we see a lot of chatbots coming. We we really don't talk to the humans. Uh, we talk, we question, and we get responses. Banks. Or maybe uh, the you know telecommunication companies they all have these chatbots. Like so we go to several websites for solving. You go to Zomato. Zomato uh, will always give you a chatbot. If you use Swiggy, you get a chatbot. First. The chatbot will uh, take care, will entertain maximum possible. And once the the chatbot reaches its limit where it cannot answer, the human comes in. Okay. I hope this Turing test is understood. Any questions so far? Uh, so there is something Nayasha is saying. We are also a human and having the right to entertainment. So yes. Okay. So Neil Sir said, once you are a CA, you need to forget. <laughs> so I'm a science student. So I don't want to say further. Uh, all right. Uh, CPA UNC exam also conducted using a kind of AI as appearing hundred questions in examination hall. Everyone has appearing different papers. Paper change on the performance of the student. All right, yes, very true. Further, any questions so far? Yes, no, any questions? No questions. Okay, I am hope I am able to uh, guide everyone. Okay, so uh, well, I'm sharing a small little history. It's there in front of you on my screen. 
and uh, I just want to spend maybe like two minutes on the screen what is written and just read it. Okay, this is very readily available history from the internet as well, but I have accumulated a few pointers and uh, shot it down here. Uh, hey, man, sir, uh, voice quality. Uh, okay, I'll try to check my headphones if you say so, but uh, I believe it's clear. Uh, I'll still check. I'll check in my headphones. Thank you. I'll check. Just a moment. Uh, is it better now? Am I, am I audible to all? Uh, sorry to interrupt you, but I think uh, Jinko voice nahi hai, maybe shared network issue hoga because I am able to hear you completely okay. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, uh, I have shared the screen and on my screen there is a brief history written. Uh, I hope everyone can see the screen. Shatwam, is my screen visible to all? Yes. All right. Thank you for. Uh, uh, there are a lot of yes coming. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So uh, I want you all to spend two minutes on the screen. There is something which is written. It's just a history. Just read it. So done. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, fine. So a brief history talks about what happened after the World War II and uh, uh, certain certain things which are being uh, written. Okay, we can read this always online. Uh, McCulloch and Waterpets, they made the first artificial neuron. Now, let me explain you what is an artificial neuron to understand AI much better. Okay, uh, we understand neurons in our brain. Do we understand neurons in our brain? So, our brain consists of uh, like a billion neurons, like 100 billions of them. All right, uh, there are a lot of yeses coming. So uh, now what happens in a neuron uh, which looks there in our brain, uh, it has a specific structure. Hold on, I I'll just show it to you. Uh, I'm just opening the slide to show you the specific structure of a neuron.
All right. So can you see the screen? Okay. Perfect. So, uh, well, there, there is this neuron, uh, and this neuron uh, has its own structure. Uh, well, there's a new nucleus. Uh, this is a biology, okay? Uh, there's a dendrite, there are exons. So, we need to understand uh, how, how the things work in there, how the process works. Uh, there are synapses. Okay, now what happens here is uh, dendrite and exons, okay? Uh, they are the I.O. input-output devices. Uh, they receive the signal, and they forward the signal. Nucleus is the one which processes the signal. All right. So, and uh, synapses are those uh, those inputs, what you can say, which have been exchanged. Uh, so, I would like to tell you, uh, in our brain, there are like 100 billion neurons, and they exchange about a 10 trillion synapses at a moment. A 10 trillion synapses, every synapse, is nothing but it is formed of an ion. Uh, I'm not taking too much chemistry, but ions are the negative voltage. All right. So if you accumulate that 10 trillion synapses, it takes up to 5 volt of energy, which is sufficient to light an electric bulb of 5 volts. Okay. So our brain produces 5 volt of energy at a moment. Shayad isiliye. जब भी दिमाग की बत्ती जलाओ का मतलब होता है तो वो छोटा सा बल्ब बता देती है पांच बल्ब पांच वोल्ट का बल्ब जला ओके सो दैट दैट्स वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग सो नाउ व्हाट हैपेंस हियर इज समबडी थॉट द थ्रू ऑफ देम मिस्टर वॉरेन पिक्चरलक एंड वाल्टर पिट्स सो दीस टू गाइस दे थॉट व्हाई कैन यू जस्ट रेप्लिकेट दिस न्यूरॉन ओनली ओके दैट वाज गुड दे दे थॉट of replicating uh, the neuron and uh, and well in 1943 they did that they could replicate a neuron and they made and they what they understood what this neuron is doing is taking an input and giving some logical output so in mathematics we might have learned the concept of logic gates and in physics also this this is in 10th standard or 10th or maybe max till 12th i don't know uh, how many of you have done it, but till 10th tak to rehta hai matlab very knowledge ke hisab se logic gates now now these logic gates uh, are the ones uh, you know jab jab hum kabhi hardware kholte hain to usme ic hoti hai integrated circuit the integrated circuit is made of these logic gates so inhone socha ki let's make a logic gate hum bana sakte hain to theek hai so they made a logic gate uh, they were physicist so so they made a logic gate wherein you can take an input throw down but and what was the logic okay there were three logics if i and or not if two inputs are there so how it works if, uh, for any uh, logic gate to work you need two set of inputs so any neuron to work you need two set of inputs if one of the input is working so for example the situation is if input a and input b they are working the output is working if input a or input b is working the output is working another third condition only input a comes in the output is the uh, contradictory or totally inverse of input a so they worked upon these three logics wherein when the two conditions are being satisfied okay so output is correct one of the two condition is satisfied the output is correct or any one condition which comes the output is inverse working on these three logics they developed the logic gate and the logic gates are and or and not combining three they made a neuron artificial neuron this artificial neuron had a logic of xor forget x or forget and forget or but for you to understand just try to understand this was been done by a boolean input output so george boole the one who made the uh, boolean algorithm uh, boolean which we have learned in our uh, schools uh, boolean means zero and one the rule of zero and one okay uh, we've learned all that uh, during our mathematics 
Okay, now what, what happens in this scenario is whatever the inputs come in, based on that, the output is collect, uh, calculated. So, yes, that's how they could just make this particular neuron. With the help of these neurons, a collection of the set of all the neurons defines a brain. So, they thought if we create a million neurons, maybe in our brain there are 100 billion of them, but if we can create a million neurons, a, little, a smaller, a small segment of brain can be defined. So with the set of inputs which are coming, we work. So how our brain works, how the neurons uh, work really, let, let me tell you, okay. Uh, for example, right now you're listening to me. You're listening to me, you listen to my voice. Uh, you are looking at your computer screen. Uh, your, your eyes are watching, but your eyes are also watching much other things only uh, it's part of the screen and you're also listening to many other sounds but you're trying to focus on one now what happens here is the neurons are receiving their receptors they receive a lot of signals the smell you you have nearby you the the sound which is coming uh, this is receptors are like uh, we can whatever five uh, senses we have all the five senses are taking their those receptions and our brain is processing those receptions in millions and out of them only few are being concentrated and we concentrate right now on listening to my voice you're trying to listen so you're trying to ignore other things okay so a huge amount of neurons are working on that similarly the machines when they are being programmed a microprocessor which is working the integrated circuit in the machine which is working it works on similar principles a similar principle of logic wherein the inputs come in it calculates and throws it out i i hope i'm not too technical i'm trying to keep myself away from technicality uh, understanding that it will become heavy i hope i'm uh, fair to all uh, yes no Okay. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yes. A lot of yeses. All right. Okay. So I'm. I think I'm able to uh, reach. I. I purposely don't want to get into more uh, depth of technicalities. Uh, to understand uh, the brain metaphor, uh, I have a couple of lectures on YouTube. You can check that at, at your own time, whatever. So probably I can give you the links to check that. And you will uh, understand those videos. Uh, okay, I'll be sharing the links. Don't worry. Uh, the documentation earlier somebody asked whether I'll be sharing the PPTs. Don't worry. Uh, I'll share the content. So that's not a problem. Uh, I'll share it with Shweta Ma'am probably, and Shweta Ma'am can give it to you. So I will share uh, whatever content is available. No problem. No problem. All right. <clears throat> Sorry. So I, I hope uh, this concept is understood. All right. Uh, okay, uh, then further, uh, Marvin Minsky. Now, Marvin Minsky is a person who has worked very closely with my uh, mentor and guide uh, of AI, who is still alive, uh, 1951, yes. But uh, the person who has worked with Marvin Minsky is alive. So, uh, they, they, he gave me an idea how the first neural network computer was being uh, built during that time. It's pretty interesting, and then Alan Turing uh, also, you know, he had a complete vision of AI, which is given computing machine. And then in 1915, he did that. Okay, so that's a history. It's pretty beautiful. Okay, uh, then there was a task to uh, understand the machines you will build. Now there is a gap which you need to fill in, and that gap is you know what machine to banjai AI program kar lege. Human inputs go machine tak pochana kaise? How do we ensure what I am speaking, what I am talking, what inputs I am giving should reach that machine? So there was a, a gap to be filled, a huge gap to be filled, and that gap was filled by a person. I'd like to show you. Okay, uh, I have. Uh, he was the guy. Can you see the screen? 
that gap was filled by this guy. Uh, I'll tell you what was the gap. Uh, John McCarthy, uh, the one who made a first world second oldest and the first AI programming language, uh, that is Lisp, Lisp processing, L-I-S-P, Lisp. So what is Lisp uh, or Lisp processing? It used to process AI-based programs. Now he built that communication gap which was being there, and well, he did that in uh, 1958. In 1958, uh, you know, he, uh, he somehow could build that uh, Lisp language which was uh, there to fulfill the gap. Like for example, I, I want to program in English, I want to write in English, and whatever this writings are being again then uh, given to machines in the machine language form. So he did that. But prior to that, somebody has already built a first order logic, FOL, and that first order logic was been derived by several people and on the basis of the first order logic, Lisp was been built. So I'm, I am not going to take you to the depth of first order logic because there will stretch a lot of lesson. and will be too, uh, it is interesting actually. Uh, can, I, can I go a little more technical with your permission? Because I really want to show you a couple of things. I hope people are not getting bored. So if you are not getting bored, then only I'll take you to the technicalities. Uh, no, please, not at all. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. There, there are two no's and there are multiple yeses. Uh, if I go by the rule of probability, then I think I should say yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'll make it more interesting. Uh, I'll try to make it more interesting for the two of them who said no. Uh, uh, Okay, I guess that technical will help you understand AI better. This is Amish, sir. Uh, the technicalities that I'm going to discuss, it's going to explain you a little more, uh, make it a little more interesting. Okay, uh, just a moment. I'll show you something. I'll just open my a few slides to. Okay, yeah. So now uh, I have certain things. Uh, now this is something which is uh, uh, well talked to me by my professor uh, when I was a student. So he gave me certain set of notes. So we used to note down the lecture notes of my professor C.B. Graham. So I, I'll just share a couple of things with you to uh, to make you understand more. Now AI uh, is defined as it's a study of mental faculties using computational models. Okay, is my screen visible to you all? Uh, hopefully uh, the screen yes. is visible. All right, yes, great. All right, perfect, super. So. Uh, now, AI is a study of mental faculties uh, through the use of computational models. That's the definition by we go there. Um, it, uh, to understand and go further ahead in that, now how these mental faculties work. Now what happens here is uh, a computer system uh, needs to act intelligent and uh, it needs to have inputs from humans and need to convert those uh, inputs of human intelligently and act on them. So how it does, I'll quickly give you a brief of it. So internal representation uh, was another uh, method uh, which was being again coined. Now what is this internal uh, representation? Okay, uh, we'll take you to that. 
in order to act intelligently, your computer must have a knowledge about the domain of interest. First thing, yes, we, uh, as we have learned. Uh, second is knowledge is the body of facts, principles gathered, or act or fact or a state of knowing that we know something. And this knowledge needs to be presented in a form which is understood by a machine. So we, we have seen that flow from the data to information to the knowledge and then to intelligence. So the knowledge needs to be presented in a form so that my machine can understand so how this machines work, how, how they become intelligent. This unique format was called as internal representation. So the plain English sentences could be translated into internal representation and they could be used to answer based on the given sentences. So that used to happen in internal representation. The writing mechanism is a little different. Okay, now certain properties of internal representation. This is very interesting. This is no technicality here. This is pure English, which we have learned during our primary section. First, internal representation must remove all the referential ambiguities. Now, uh, there, there are certain set of referential ambiguities which were there in internal representation. Uh, now, I've written an example here. Uh, Raj said that Ram was not well, he must be lying. Now, this is very interesting. Raj said that Ram was not well. So, who is lying? Can you tell me who is he? Can you all uh, tell me uh, who is he? Raj? Somebody says Raj is lying. Uh, who is he? Or Ram is lying? Uh, some Raj Ram, Raj Ram. Oh, that's how it is going to be. Raj or Ram. This is referential ambiguity. We need to reference it correctly. So that was the biggest problem in our language. See, I told you earlier, our languages are uh, you know, very tacky. Uh, could be either. Uh, no, it's not either. It's very, very correctly referred to. Now, if you are a friend of Raj and you know that Raj is a notorious guy and who always lies, then you will say Raj must be only lying. Why? Because Raj is notorious. You know it. That is how it has been programmed. Okay. And in another way, if you would know Ram is notorious, then you would say Ram would be lying. He's not, he's well, but he's just saying he's not well or whatever. So this is a referential ambiguity where to reference. Machines need that clarity. Second, internal represent, representation should avoid word sense ambiguity. Okay, so what is word sense ambiguity? Uh, this is very interesting. First example, Raj caught a pen. Means you're actually holding a pen with your fingers. Caught a pen. Then we say Raj caught a train. Means you are actually inside the train. You, you train came in, you boarded the train, you're sitting inside the train. That's what you actually try to mean. Then, Raj caught fever, uh, which means Raj is not actually going and hugging the fever. It means Raj is unwell. But the word caught here has different meanings. We call this as a word sense ambiguity. The word has different senses. Caught, it can catch a pen. Like the caught is being used to actually catch, the caught is being used to actually sit in the train, the thought is being used to actually define the situation wherein the person is unwell. So that's his word sense ambiguity. Are we clear? Yes? All right. Uh, third, internal representation must explicitly mention functional structure. So the example is Ram killed Ravan. Ravan was killed by Ram. Now, this is, uh, you can say, the figure of speech, like the, the speech has been said the other way. Ram killed Ravan and Ravan was killed by Ram. But again, it, the machines won't understand that. When you say Ram killed Ravan, for machine, Ram and Ravan are two just variables. A minus B. Now, when you turn this point, Ravan was killed by Ram, it becomes B minus A. Mathematically, the output is different. So, 
uh, well, there is a big, big gap. Okay, somebody is writing here. Uh, I heard that Sanskrit is the language which has a unique word pronunciation and meaning. Uh, Sanskrit has sandhis, which means uh, you don't need uh, connections, connectivities between the sentences. Hence, you can speak the sentence in any of the way, any of the form, and it will mean the same. On the same principles, we are trying to build Lisp on the basis of Sundays. So what he said is correct. <laughs> so uh, they came uh, to handle this, they came with predicate calculus. Predicate calculus is an internal representation methodology, one of the methodologies, there are many other methodologies, okay, which they came with. To explain now, there is an example which I would just like to say. Raj came late on Sunday, so in this, Raj came late and Sunday. There are three different entities. I would say Raj is A, Sunday is B, came late is sign of plus. I would say A plus B. So the representation is came late Raj Sunday uh, in predicate calculus that would be written as plus A B. This is how it is represented. So the variables which are been there, they are they have been taken. The values are been taken, and what you will do with that value is been defined. So in short, I, I'll just like to I'll, I'll I'm just summing it up quickly. Okay, in in short, in predicate calculus, there were arguments and there were predicates. So there were objects and there were assertions. There are objects, Raj, Sunday. All these are objects in a sentence. And there are assertions made about that object that is came late, uh, whether it came on time, uh, Raj is on Sunday, whatever, whatever we are writing. So our sentences are this way. So we've got two types of sentences. One sentence is with the argument and the predicate, and another sentence is which are straight away instances. For example, Anita is a woman. So it doesn't have a predicate part. This is an English, huh? this is a primary English I'm talking about. So, Anita is a woman. It, it is a sentence without any predicate. So, we just define Anita is equal to women. That means it's an instance which has been defined. So, in AI, these things were defined that way. Con considering arguments separate, predicate separate, and the assertions, uh, you know, connections between them. I hope, I hope. Um, uh, this is interesting here. So I, I won't be going further. I'll hold it on here. Uh, I don't want to take it uh, further, but I hope this is clear. It's not so much there. Okay, any questions so far? Okay. Uh, wouldn't is be a predicate of being? Uh, I didn't get you, sorry. A screen lost. Oh, yeah, I actually turned it off. I, I'm sure I'm telling something else. Uh, Terrenium uh, uh, is comes from being. Okay, that way. Uh, probably the sentence could be since uh, I don't really know who, who the person who made being. Uh, the one who formed in this English, I, I can't comment on that. So it would be wrong if I comment anything wrong on this. As in being is a woman. No, no, no idea. I'm, I, I'm not getting it. A screen is lost. Yes, because uh, I have turned it off. I'm showing you something else. Okay, uh, any further questions so far? I hope I'm clear to all. Okay, no, uh, okay. Can I have your questions, please? Oh, sir, no question, you mean, okay. Uh, okay, Lisp, I can explain Lisp again. I'll put it a loop. Uh, Lisp means list processing. I just showed you an example of uh, A plus B. So Lisp 
uh, it's a it's a language by which you can calculate or you can write programs uh, in AI. Okay, so probably uh, there are a few programs which I have done during my college time, and they tested them online. You can just type my name on Google and just write list. You will get all the programs uh, with explanations. So you just need to type my full name and type uh, list in your Google search. It will start showing you all the programs. So maybe you will be able to understand more list uh, on that. I've done that during my college time, so it's still there online. All right. Uh, is it necessary for even AI program to pass a Turing test? Uh, not necessary. Python is more used uh, nowadays, I guess. Uh, yes, nowadays uh, it's been highlighted more, but language was always been used. And for that, you need to have knowledge of algorithms. Uh, you need to have basic logic, uh, not knowledge of algorithms really. So if you have certain set of logic here, then done. Is SQL and AI? SQL means structured query language which is used to uh, you know, query the database. So it's just to language to query data. It's, it's, not, it's not an AI based language. Python is necessary for AI. No, not at all necessary for AI. Python is one of the language which is good if you, if you wanna code something in AI. You can code in any language. In fact, you can create your own language. Uh, I have developed my own language in year 2014 and published it. Uh, it took me four years to publish that language, but I somehow made it. So probably if you want to read more on that language, it's there available online again. Uh, what are the other languages than Lisp or AI? Uh, to be honest, uh, there are, you can, there is Prolog, there is Lisp, uh, definitely Python uh, also, I even in C, so practically, you can program AI in any language. There is no restriction. Uh, okay, R knowledge is necessary. R is another tool which is used for data mining. It's good for it. You can use it for AI as well. Is R better for learning or Python as a beginner? As a beginner, uh, instead of programming languages, you should learn uh, object-oriented programming. That means the base of programming. Okay, that's very important. Uh, if you know uh, how the programming how the programming is done, be it any language, you'll be able to program. So that's what we teach our students. Our knowledge is necessary, not see as I said, uh, not not compulsory. Any programming language uh, is not compulsory. I would like to take more questions. Good that I'm getting questions. So I think uh, we we can have questions more instead of me explaining you more on. Uh, things I, I have any which way a lot more to explain, but we can have questions for today. Uh, can you please explain cognitivity? Uh, okay, I can explain cognitive, cognitivity. Uh, for, uh, to explain cognitivity, try to understand it is about human thinking. When we perceive, how we perceive differently, human perception. Uh, every human will have a different set of perception to a given same set of input. We cognize our own world. We cognize our own understanding to everything. Now this, uh, uh, where we cognize ourselves, this where we, we define our own set of understanding to the things, we call it cognitivity. In short, to give you a little idea. Okay, uh, we'll go with another question. What is the expected timeline when AI will replace accountants? And will never. So don't worry, your job is always safe. AI will never, uh, and then like people ask me, AI will uh, replace jobs. That won't happen. AI will not replace jobs. Rather, AI will create jobs. When computers came in uh, and uh, there was a paradigm shift, people said computers will take away jobs. Sorry. In fact, there are many jobs open. It's just that new jobs open, you need to change. I'll give you one of the simple example. I read it the other day online. 
uh, it, it just happened uh, during this uh, COVID pandemic. I, I happened to read online. Uh, a lady has written a small little article saying there was a, a Panipuri seller outside her colony. And uh, during the pandemic, it was, uh, you know, he, he used to make some like thousand bucks a day. And somehow because of the pandemic, the person could not uh, do the business. So after a few days when everything was shut, she happened to see the same person selling the mask. So now she went up to that guy and asked him that uh, you were the same Panipuri seller, now you're selling the mask. He simply answered one thing. See, uh, currently Panipuri is not the need. The business is shut. I have found a simple way. The current deed is mask. So my wife who knows how to stitch a mask, she started stitching a mask at home. And now, now I'm selling the mask. I'm just making a quick buck. Fair enough. That's a simple thing. Somebody at a very smaller scale can understand. Why can't we that with the time we need to change? And we, we, when we change with the time, things work with us. Like Charles Darwin said, if you don't, if you don't change with the time, and if you don't change with the change, then probably you will perish. Okay, uh, moving further. Uh, do you have any videos on programming on YouTube? I have. Uh, I don't have really pro on programming, but I have other things you can Google. Uh, can you please provide me your brief intro since many members joined the webinar lately? Uh, okay, Sora Bakaria is my name. You can just type into Google. Everything would be there. All right, yes, uh, we need to change. Another question, how much impact AI will play in these times of crisis where work from home will be more happening? Uh, AI has already started showing its effects like uh, from the medicine study and from monitoring people, whether they are working or not. And for everything, everywhere where you see the computer machine, computers have been used, AI is there. You just need to understand. It's there. Uh, in auditing and analysis, yes. Uh, okay, nice example for change. Thank you. Developing with technology is necessary very much. Survival of the fittest. Yes, Charles Darwin said, survival of the fittest. A uh, simple example, guys. Today, you all are chartered accountants. You're sitting for an AI lecture. You are ready to change. So that's the answer. Uh, Okay, uh, so what about privacy and data security when AI have so much data uh, in wrong hands, it can ruin. Uh, okay, data and privacy becomes another uh, subject of uh, learning. But uh, in a short word, I would say, see, it's a knife. You use it to cut vegetable or to slit a throat. It's in your hand. So data is just like that where it is and how it has been used uh, it's a totally call of perception okay in developed countries they they are now offering python ecosystem tableau and ai uh, against uh, india is doing the same and india is a developed country um, someone says that how future requirements will be not of accountants but of accountants with engineering background is it true Absolutely wrong. Uh, I'll give you one example. Today, I taught you biology. Okay, I was an electronic student. <laughs> I, I've never taken biology during my study. So I never come from a biology background, but I understand human brain. Because when I started learning AI, I, I understood this is the point I need to learn that. So I, I think that is ruled out. Okay, uh, AI, uh, I think, can also check how much each person is working and which app is used for how much time, how much keyboard and how much mouse is used. Uh, very much true, uh, that is possible. Uh, somebody has posted my URL. Well, that's my URL, right? Uh, in developed countries, they are now offering Python review while performing accounting courses. Uh, yes, very true, very true. You complete the sentence, very true. Uh, what would be the demand 
and more focus on AI, uh, AI world and what would perish. Uh, that time can decide. I'll be the wrong person if I give you the future prediction of what will happen. But one thing is clear. If you are ready to learn, you will not perish. So you keep learning, keep learning AI. Uh, at least for a few years, definitely you'll be able to survive. Uh, what would be in demand and more focused on AI world and what would perish? Okay, it's the same thing. All right. Any further questions? Uh, learn AI means what? Learn AI? I'm sorry, I didn't get it. Uh, QuickBook or Xerox is a zero is com is accounting software which have AI which have a AI not complete but partially. Is it correct? I need to check with them whether they have implemented, but I'm sure they, they would be having. So uh, they would be having. See, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I'm not uh, from accounting background, so a lot of accounting softwares would be unknown to me. I have a limited knowledge, and that limited knowledge is very, very away from chart accountants. So uh, in this, I need to take your support for this time. Uh, but yeah. Uh, if, if it's a conglomerate company, definitely they'll be using AI. I can give you examples how AI can work. Probably in our next session, I'll be explaining you how AI applications work, how things work behind, what is behind the scene. Okay, or what a CA should learn to accommodate fast paced changes. Uh, CA, a part of accounting, or rather not just CA, but everyone, everyone in the current scenario need to learn information technology core and if you want to excel try to learn it um, in a little more depth and if possible a little bit of ai so that nobody can fool around you you understand things and you can survive okay uh, smack any idea on this AI product uh, it learns from imports this fact is normally used in usa okay you mentioned that you learn AI and you will survive. Uh, is it learning, programming, or just understanding good enough? Uh, depending upon, uh, it totally depends upon uh, whether you want to do programming or not. If you want to be in the field where you are, uh, understanding a basic AI, like what we are doing right now, is fairly enough. Not an issue. Uh, let me start with Q&A. Uh, yes, sir. I've started Q&A. Uh, all right, uh, sir, I've just some good books or a movie for engaging experience on AI. Uh, okay, I'll I'll definitely. Uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll definitely post a few books which I personally refer to. So I'll give you all the content. I'll give you entire list of the content and the URLs and everything what you should uh, refer to. I'll do that. I'll give you that. Uh, probably at the end of all the sessions, we'll give you entire package altogether. Okay, so a uh, few questions coming more. Is data science a part of AI? And if yes, then how AI, uh, yes, data science, uh, we will discuss this topic further. In fact, let me let me tell you uh, what we are going to discuss further to give you an idea, okay? Uh, so uh, we've got a couple of topics. You forget what you speak, book, name, program, or course you will suggest. Uh, you will not forget, sir. Don't worry. I'll make that impact that you won't forget. And I'll definitely share the data with you so that you remember. I'll do that. Uh, so uh, we've made a small little uh, idea to a small little program guideline how we are going to work with. So I'll just share it with you so that uh, you remember this moment. I'll share that with the Switam also, but right now I'm just sharing on my screen. Uh, all right, is my screen visible to all? Yes. Uh, perfect. So, uh, oh, well, uh, today our introduction and uh, history of AI was been there in our part. Uh, then uh, Asishwar is going to talk about types of AI, which is fuzzy, NN, uh, neural network, machine learning, deep learning, and NLP. 
Uh, after that, I'll be talking on AI applications like uh, OK Google and Watson. Uh, then again, uh, Arthur Sir will come and talk about the statistical methods. He'll introduce you with statistical methods. Uh, then I'll give you certain uh, data analytical algorithms which have been used. Uh, after that, Arthur Sir will introduce you with BI and BI applications. Uh, okay, and then I'll be introducing you with a decision support system. Then BI using social media. Okay, that's my favorite topic. Uh, I'll, I'll explain you that on that because uh, you'll see me hyperactive on social media, and I've done enough research uh, on that because um, uh, that that's a secret kept for you, and you will be amazed. And uh, then uh, data visualization and reporting. Uh, it's going to be a practical implementation by Asusha. And then there'll be a dashboard explanation, okay, uh, by Asusha. So we'll uh, give you an understanding of business intelligence uh, in that part. So if you can see the screen, this is the program which we've built, the 10 different modules, how we are going to discuss, okay? And I will definitely share the same with the Spartan app, so she can share all that with you. Any further questions so far? Or are we good to go for today? Uh, data visualization, somebody wrote Power BI. Uh, Power BI, yes, it does. It does data visualization. Very correct. Yeah. Ashwada, ma'am, uh, uh, are you yes. going to go for anything more for the? Uh, I think we can uh, close for the day. If uh, okay. no questions. If any questions are there, I can happily answer for ten more minutes. I have my time. Uh, uh i can see this chatbot uh, thanks sir okay so Nilji, thank you for your compliments uh do we receive a program link every day uh i think that's with them i'm going to answer you on that if you can share some content for for tomorrow tomorrow is going to be a study on the fuzzy neural network which is types of ai different types of ai you will be learning tomorrow okay uh, whether the webinar is recorded, uh, somebody is questioning. So, I think ma'am can answer on that. Uh, I think the session is being recorded. I can see. So maybe again, ma'am can help uh, you yeah. on that. Uh, yeah, definitely yes. we are trying. If uh, if, we, if we would be able to retrieve it completely, definitely we are trying to share with everyone. Perfect. 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 Uh, another question is, can you share something to read which can help us understand? Definitely, I'll give you study material. I'll give you uh, reading material. Uh, don't worry, don't worry on that. I'll definitely do that. Uh, what is the uh, difference between AI and robotic process automation, RPA, what we call it. So robotic process automation is an AI-based program which automates small, small, small tasks. For example, a task is to print, print a paper, or print on a, a piece of paper some, some text. So that has been automated if, I come into the office automatically to start printing. So that is the process automation. I can automate any process. So the processes have been written. If a certain condition arises, then things will happen. For example, uh, today, if I process all the accounts, it will be automatically printed without even questioning. So that is RPA. So RPA has those small, small set of uh, programs. Okay. Uh, what AI says about today's lecture? that uh, sir you can say <laughs> uh, if recorded version and the material can be shared yes it will be power bi tableau automation anywhere which is better all are better sir. every every uh, application is built in its own set of capacity so we cannot uh, actually compare them but depending upon the requirements they are best yeah, members join the resting since the link is reactivated again uh, this question is for Swetha, ma'am uh, uh where she is ready for change or static okay from the uh on which topics we get practical exposure uh there will be practical exposure is going to be almost on uh, decision uh, support system uh bi using social media uh data visualization dashboard all these are practical oriented we will be showing you a couple of things happening okay uh can you give example on how finance can be integrated with AI? Yes, definitely. Uh, I can I can give you uh, an understanding. Uh, simple stock market prediction, if you see. Okay, um, even that's been happening using AI. Uh, and uh, business intelligence tools. I'll be sharing you 
how uh, the ad advertise Google Ads work and how they generate revenue through the ads. So that's going to be a part in my AI application where I'll tell you that. So how uh, I'll actually show you rather, so you will be able to understand how it works. In, in AI starts, our knowledge is quite well counter knowledge is lacking. Uh, statistics and uh, yes, knowledge is required. A little bit of knowledge, if you have, it's always better. We can have closer this. Okay. Uh, in a layman's term, RPA is used for monotonous work. AI is actual human intelligence. No, even AI is monotonous work. It's for digital marketing, right? Uh, yeah, you can say not just digital marketing, but uh, several other aspects than digital marketing. Okay. Uh, another question AI, BI, and ML are three di very different. Uh, you will understand this difference tomorrow by Asisha. He's going to talk on the same topic. Come here, sir. RPA can be deployed in assembly line, AI, and ML in legal advisory. Uh, okay. Not only in assembly line, but somewhere more to that. Even in legal advisory, process automation can happen anywhere. So that's it. I think I think we are done. And um, so I hope I'm able to uh, explain you whatever I can. So thank you for today. Uh, thank you, Shweta, ma'am. If you can take over, and uh, shall I conclude the lecture? Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Yes, you can. Uh, thank you so much, Sora. Uh, we all are not connected physically, but your interaction made it so live that we didn't feel that we are not there in your physical classroom. And uh, I'm sure everyone will agree on this point. So really, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll connect again tomorrow. And all the participants, please know that we are rescheduling the time from 6.30 to 8.30 to 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. due to some reason. So tomorrow's session will start by 4 o'clock. Link will be sent to you through mail also. And also we will post uh, uh, in our WhatsApp group. And daily you will receive a different, different link. So you have to log in through uh, link only. So I think now we can close for the today. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Hello, Sita, ma'am. How many goes? And we love you. आप मत करिए आप मत करिए मैं कर रहा हूँ आप मत करिए मैं कर रहा हूँ ठीक है ठीक है हेलो चिंता मैडम हेलो हेलो हाँ बोला आप मत करिए मैं करता हूँ आप लोग ठीक है ठीक है हम मॉडरेटर बनाएंगे